Hello everyone, first we'll examine an element of security system known as a laser alarm. It may be hard to imagine this device being seriously needed at the household level, but I'm sure you can think of some situation where you'd appreciate the knowledge of an another side entrance or escape, be it burgles or pets. In general, in general, life is life and everyone can decide for themselves on how this device can be useful to them. Now let's move on to the list of the necessary parts and components. First of all, we'll need a soldering iron and the ability to use it, or at very least a stadion and out, desire to learn said ability. Since the complexity level of this invention is presented as medium, also will come in handy a breadboard. This is a breadboard that allows you to assemble the components into the circuit without using soldering. Let's start with the electrical circuit. It will need a thyristor, an electrolytic capacitor, several resistors, the size of which depends on the power supply, a photoresistor and one LED. And naturally to complete the device we'll also need the laser itself, but we'll return to it a bit later. Consistently relying on the diagram and instructions, we first check everything on the breadboard and then solder the actual circuit. For the alarm we'll need two tin boxes, preferably with a hinged lid. You can easily find such boxes on AliExpress, besides then they are often used as a packaging for various confections, lollipops and such, or in the women's departments of stores. Begin with cleaning, tearing off the old paint and repainting the boxes. You'll also need to carefully measure and set up markers for filling and drill the necessary holes. Then we fill the boxes with pen light battery holders, the circuit soldier it according to the diagram, laser, alarm, connection components and wires. And then with a generous serving of hot melt glue fix everything tight together, preventing any shaking of the components. As a result we get two blocks. One emits a laser, the other receives it. As soon as the signal transmission is interrupted, the alarm is triggered. Pretty simple construction, you just need patience and diligence. Next, let's proceed on to something less intricate, which is worth nothing was even a military weapon in the past and presently serves as an amazing entertainment equipment, which for all its simplicity is breathtaking when it works. As they say, all ingenious is simple, and as you called we already guessed, we're talking about a boomerang. So, if you didn't have the internet as a child, but dreaming of having your own boomerang and the one that really works at that, then now is the time to make a boomerang with your own hands. And in case this dream has already faded out long time ago, then most certainly yours and probably others, children will appreciate this device of Australian Aborigines quite a bit. The key point in making a boomerang is weight. Therefore, to begin, we need to pick two wooden planks, about 30 cm in length, 4 cm wide and about 7 mm thick. As we stated earlier, the heavier, the better. To fasten the plank together, we'll need to make the same grooves in the middle of both of them. To do this, we need to sew two gauges to the middle of the plank and knock out the inner part of the groove with a knife or chisel. With a knife or chisel. If necessary, file down the flows. Next, the blades need to be filled into a shape of plain wing. The direction of the profiles is the same and goes successively in a circle. You can mark the spot for filling with a pencil so as not to get confused. To get a good result, you'll need both a file and sandpaper. The shaped boomerang parts are then held together with any wood glue or liquid nails. If you're up to it, the boomerang can be painted and or varnished. That's about it really, the rest is won your perseverance with the file and we move on to the next contraption.
coming up next is a homemade left softbox, which in any fin technology store, even at its chipset, will cost you about 300 euros. And what is better motivation than a good opportunity to save up, especially when you don't work as an illuminator on a film set in Hollywood? First, we need to make the case. As the base of it, we recommend you to use in an aluminium sheet since it drives heat well, not letting the lids to head up, which will make them last a lot longer. As a light source, feel free to use a ready-made LED strip, or you can take a bunch of LEDs and connect them with wires yourself. In the end, the case should essentially resemble a photo frame. To build a panel with three light modes, we need three control drivers and two switches. Switching between the three modes will occur as follows. The switches are preset individually and the switches are pressed simultaneously. When mounting the driver unit, you must also take into account an excessive head from the LEDs, so it will be better to install it with a spacer made of a thick PVC plate. On the outer surface of the panel you can stretch white fabric or and kind of made white film. These are the key points of making a worthy alternative to a professional cinema appliance. And we move on to the next device, which will surely appeal to loyal fans of the video game series Fallout and people interested in post-apocalyptic genre as a whole. It's a pendant shining with acid-colored light disguised as a radiation sign. The manufacturing process of this one is simple, it can be assembled with tools which can be found in any home. As the case, we use a plastic bottle cap plus the back cover, cut from a piece of plastic. Next, we screw metal spikes into it. The back cover will be mounted on neodymium magnets glued around the perimeter, which are magnetized to these spikes. Filling the manufactured case with components such as a round battery holder, a switch, three LEDs and wires to connect all the elements in a simple circuit. For decorative purpose, the case must be painted, for example, to look rusty and varnish it. In this simple way, you can get yourself a pretty unique accessory. And here comes the closing subjects of our review. Here we have another carpenter-oriented task. We will work with wood and planning a real pure pirate pipe for smoking tobacco. The initial blank will be a wooden bar, an oak one for example, the original dimensions of which correspond to the dimensions of the final product. Therefore, as a basis it is better to take an already finished sample of a factory-made pipe. We start with a markup. For simplicity and to save time and effort, the semicircle elements of the mold can be pre-drilled in advance with a feather drill. Then finish the draft for with a jigsaw. Next, again with the help of a feather drill about 20 mm in size, we drill the main hole. With it as a starting point, we carefully symmetrically file the workpiece with sandpaper to obtain the desired shape and aesthetic appearance. Next is the hardest part, drilling the smokeway. We take a thin 3 mm drill and drill the required number of holes to form a trouch smokeway. The remaining excess holes we then plug with wooden splinters and PVA mode wood glue. After the glue dries, we again polish the places where the plugs were inserted. And it's almost done, the rest is up to your enthusiasm. You can decorate the pipe with paint, perhaps some more would work and then cover the surface with the most appropriate means protect it from wear, with varnish or something better sweet specifically for wooden surface. Taking this opportunity we remind you that smoking harms your health and ask you to give likes, write comments and share our video. And on this note we say goodbye, thank you very much for your time and see you again on the channel.